We do have to also talk about the Lakers side of this. And man, D'Angelo Russell scored 20. Looked like he was having himself a ball out there. Nick Young is a new man. Luke Walton's got Brandon Ingram happy about having to prove himself coming off the bench. And here's D'Angelo's quote about what all is going on over there. He said, it's not about one guy anymore. It's about sacrificing for the team. Kobe deserved every bit of attention he got in his last year. That's to make sure Kobe doesn't come put out a hit on him. Um, but there is some freedom in Kobe not being around. Is the angel a little too happy about Kobe not being around there? I agree with him. I agree with him 100%. I yeah. mean, I even said it last year. I wasn't going to. I was going to defer my judgment on D'Angelo until Kobe was gone. Hmm. Let's just think about it. He comes in the league. He's 19. It's Kobe's 20th season. He's been in the league since this kid was before he was born. <laughs> so when he started falling in love with basketball, it was probably all about Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Now you had the opportunity to play with this guy. When you play with him, what are you going to do? I'm going to just I'm just going to give Kobe it to Bryant. him. I'm going to defer to him. So I don't know. I, I couldn't judge this guy last year. He's absolutely right. There's a lot more freedom now. It's not about the victory lap that Kobe was taking. It's not about one of the greatest players ever. We can all kind of be ourselves now. You know who took the most shots per 36 minutes last season in the NBA? The most. Kobe Bryant. And you're, not, I love, you're not shocking me but here. I love Kobe. That's not some hot I, take, I Zach. love Kobe. I love Kobe. <laughs> but Kobe like, Bryant takes a lot of shots. 36% no from the field, and you're no taking way. the most shots in the league? That's ridiculous. It's objectively ridiculous. And now it's like the Lakers can, okay, let's be a team now. Let's see, like, what this team can be. And, by the way, Russell was great last night. You know who looked awesome? Julius Randle. That was the best he's ever looked in the NBA. And, I mean, look, you know Kobe's line, right? Why would I pass the ball to someone I think can't shoot as well as I <laughs> You're shooting 36%. That's why. I know. but I don't blame him for things. taking all of those shots last year. I mean, these people are paying big money to come and see his last game. Try to give him the best show you can give him. Okay. <laughs> I give him a pass last year. Just last year, I give him a pass. And, and look, I, I think I hung out with Luke Walton last night a little bit before the game, and he's so loose. And it's funny. He's so different from his dad, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Bill's this huge personality. Luke is so mellow, but he relates to the players so well. That's not a knock on Byron. I think Byron was, frankly, in really an untenable situation last year as a coach. But Luke has been able, on this team, with this squad this year, been able to encourage those guys in a way that I think is making a significant difference. Besides the Kobe factor, I think the Luke factor is there. All right, before we go to break, I do want to talk about what happened in Philadelphia last night. R&B singer Seven Streeter says the Sixers kept her from singing the national anthem because she was wearing a jersey that said, We Matter. Here's what she posted on Twitter. I'm at the 76ers game to sing the national anthem, and the organization is telling me that I can't because I'm wearing a We Matter jersey. And here was the Sixers' response. Quote, the Philadelphia 76ers organization encourages meaningful actions to drive social change. We use our games to bring people together, to build trust, and to strengthen our communities. <sighs> the implication, for those of you who misplaced your reading between the lines spectacles, is that Streeter wearing a We Matter shirt is somehow in itself divisive. The other implication is that wearing a shirt that promotes discussion and thought among millions of people is somehow not, quote, meaningful action. Look, I, I have no idea who at the Sixers made this call, and I think it's important to note this was not the NBA preventing Streeter from singing. It was one individual team, and it is that team's right to make that decision. It's their home game. It's their anthem performance. But, man, it was a terrible decision, and they will be judged for it. How did we get to a point in this country where a black woman wanting to say that she matters just as much as anyone else is offensive to some people? And how did the Sixers get to the point where those are the people they want to side with? You know the expression, on the wrong side of history? I promise picking the side of those who want to warp something as basic as a person affirming their right to exist and be recognized into some kind of insult to our country or the military? That is the wrong side of history. Saying you're an advocate for social change, but only the photo op kind that doesn't ruffle the feathers of the most racist and sexist corners of society? That is the wrong side of history. One of the reasons I love the NBA so much is that this league has an incredible legacy of being so much better than that. The Sixers would do well to try to live up to that legacy instead of what we saw last night. Take advantage of the youngsters. Miles Turner, that's why they, they're going to poker. That's, it, yep. that's tracked down, and that's another Dallas turnover. 
Ellis lost it. Matthews picked it up. Well, Matthews made a good play. He, he fooled Ellis. And then Dirk Nowitzki goes up and throws the ball away. And this is not what the Mavericks really want to do this year. <laughs> that, that's just a helpful demonstration. I'm not going to sit here and let people disparage Dirk Nowitzki at age 38. I'm not going to let that happen. What, what are you, you going to do? Nothing. Okay, Move on to the next one. First game jitters. <laughs> first game jitters. All right. Man, did you see it? Let's talk about a good thing. Did you see Anthony Davis last night? Wow. Fifth player ever to drop at least 50 points on an opening night. And that wasn't a Kobe 50, people. That was 50 with 16 boards, 7 steals, 5 assists, 4 blocks. That is some nice company he is in with those numbers but guys this team still lost by five to the Nuggets I mean is this the future for AD Zach is this is this going to be like this great unicorn transcendent talent stuck on this team uh, until Drew Holiday comes back from his personal situation I mean this is just reality I mean he's playing with guys that are no disrespect they're backups right. they're backups that are starting for the Pelicans is one player going to change and that? Well, it, it would help to have, so, like, he's the best shooter on the floor for them a lot. Of, and, like, it's just when he rolls to the hoop or has the ball in the post, there's nowhere for him to go. There's, like, nine bodies everywhere. I just feel bad for him, man. This, this, this guy is such a talent. I mean, everybody talks about he can't stay healthy. I mean, just think, some of these times that he's, he's missed a lot of games, he may have been healthy at the end of that and just didn't come back to play. Well, I mean. Because the team was so bad. Talk about the health thing, too. That's a little bit of my question here. You have a guy who is clearly special. He is on a franchise that, as of yet, has not been able to put the right talent and players around him, and also, frankly, has not been able to keep him healthy or the players around him healthy. And there have been articles about their medical staff, and are they really borrowing too much from the Saints because they share some medical staff from that organization? And, hey, football players and basketball players uh, need different medical care. <laughs> that's a little different. I mean, is he in an island in a place that maybe isn't? the best place for him well we talked about the Rockets how it already feels like last year for the Rockets it feels like last year for the Pelicans too like half their team is hurt they don't have enough guys and like if they start if you start in the NBA like one and eight you're kind of done like unless you're awesome yeah. you're yeah. just not going to get back in the playoff race and you know they really need Drew Holiday and just other starter level NBA players Chunzi, were there franchises where you guys as players would know around the league don't go there <laughs> they're not going to take care of you, or they're not going to put, put the team together. I'm not going to make you name names. But yeah, what, there, that there, there's a few that you, you know, when you're looking around <laughs> a free agent, you're saying, nah, never right. mind. I, I, I want to be taken care of a little better than that. Right. But, and I'm not but, saying the Pelicans are that. I'm wondering yeah, whether sure. we're I, in that situation. I don't know that they not. are or not, but I mean, I, it, watching him play mm -hmm. um, and play so well with guys that just can't get it done for him just reminds me really of a guy that you guys are very familiar with, and that's T-Mac. Yeah. Um, watching T-Mac play in, in, in Orlando in some of his prime days and the frustration that i seen him come up with because there was no good way to guard him. I mean, he, I mean, he could score 40-something and get 15 assists and eight, nine rebounds anytime he wanted to. It's just, I, I hope he's not here just wasting his talent away for years in New Orleans when he just doesn't have a chance. And everyone, anyone who knows me well knows that New Orleans is my favorite city in the country. So I would want nothing more than to have a successful NBA team. Selfishly, I'd like to go there a little bit more often. <laughs> I hope that they can get the talent around him and get the health together because he's so special, right? Me too. We want to see me too. him be special. He was already flexing his wrist last night. I, it, that's what I saw. It just it got me very concerned. All right, let's talk Russell Westbrook. He played his first game of the post-Durant era. And as expected, he did a little bit of everything. Well, dancing, 32 points, 12 rebounds, and a late-game takeover that led the Thunder to a 103-97 win at Philadelphia. Now, Sean, should Westbrook feel good about this victory, or are you just scraped by the 76ers and maybe not so much? I think you feel good about any victory. You're like... I mean, you're talking to Westbrook, you know, it's, it's not a shared team anymore. It's my yeah. team. Um, and wins matter. It doesn't matter where you're at. I mean, you go to Philly last night, it was electric in there. Seeing Joel Embiid, I'm sure they had a lot of people there. Yeah. Seeing a little crazy fan in the front who <laughs> lost a lot of money <laughs> in a short amount of time. I'm glad but that they threw that guy out, right? I, they should have. Because you have they this guy out. Yeah, like, there we go. That's lovely, They right? should have thrown him out. And that was early in the first quarter. So. Russell's face. That was, a, that was your say. That's the best thing you did all night was the face of that, <laughs> hey. that idiot, you know? That was a bad investment for him. <laughs> Going and paying all that money, money for those and tickets and getting out put again. out really quick. But Westbrook is going to be frustrated a lot this year. Um, he takes on, uh, he, he's got a lot on his plate this season. Um, he's got a lot of new players. You looked at him last night, and, and some of those faces that he made when he was a little disgusted that it didn't go his way, um, you'll, you'll, you'll see a lot of this out of him. Now, you'll see him play great. 
He makes great faces. Yeah, you'll see him get a lot of big man. numbers, a lot of triple doubles. But you're going to see a lot of frustration out of him, Well, I want to see how patient he's going to be with these guys this year. I think last night is like a good example of how they're going to have to. First of all, you're right. Any road win, I don't care where. Golden State needed a buzzer beater to win in Philly right. last year. A road win's a win. But they're going to have to win ugly this year. They don't have a lot of shooting around him. Oladipo was 4 of 16. That fit's going to take some time. They're like a battering ram. He's just going to have to batter the rim, and they're going to get a million offense rebounds. It's not going to be pretty, but that's how they're going to have to win games. And I think they'll win a decent number. If you had to give me the one way you think Russ's game is going to most change this year without KD there, what would it be? Maybe post up a little bit more. They did that down the stretch last night. It's an easy way to get him deep and to get easy passing lanes for him to see. But, you know, that's... That's, that's, he's still been doing that already. Right. All right, well, we'll look for that. And meanwhile, on the Sixers side, you're right. They do finally have something to be happy about with Joel Embiid. I mean, man, long-awaited debut is an understatement. 20 points, 7 boards, 2 blocks. Remember, he was the third pick in the 2014 draft. I mean, do you look at this, Zach, as like, the process is paying off. <laughs> Sam Hickey cheering up at Stanford. It's funny, like, the process is paying off, but Noel's hurt. Okafor is coming off the bench. Simmons is hurt. Michael Carter-Williams is gone. Like, it's like, <laughs> like but, but, like, th this is the whole point, though. The process is, if we can get one or two transcendent guys, everything else is noise. And, like, maybe Joel Embiid is a transcendent guy. I'm excited to watch him play. Can the dude pass once? He has no assists <laughs> in preseason or regular games. Zero assists. Like, I might get an assist by accident if he threw me those are Kobe floor. points. That I, was the distinction I was trying to make earlier. I'll tell you what, this kid's ceiling is unbelievable. Um, they're not paying on the pass, first of all, Zach. They're paying him to give <laughs> just up. Just once. Just one They're paying time. him to block some shots. They, this guy's been sitting out for two years. Living the NBA lifestyle. Would I wouldn't let, pass let, either. Let him shoot the ball. Look at the, look at the dream. Oh, look man, at the dream. look at, look at, oh, it, look at the dream. I mean, the greatest of all time. In my, in my, for a center position that I've seen, mm -hmm. this guy is the best I've ever seen. Are I see some similarities. Are you already the man I who played one basketball, official basketball that's all game? That's all I, but that's all I can go on, oh, right? Oh, here's that's all I can go on. Joe Klein didn't turn on his TV today and think, I'm going to get on a highlight with Akeem Olajuwon. We got to do <laughs> Joe Klein like that on uh, ESPN? I mean, look, it happens. you got to live with it for that's the true. rest of your life. Do you th I, I do love the way Joel is embracing the process nickname and showing that loyalty to Sam. I think that's pretty cool. I think it's a good nickname. If Paul right? Pierce can be the truth, why can't he be the process? The truth is the best nickname of his era. I'm sorry. That's I think that, it's a good nickname. Being... Mr. Big Shot is a good one, too, though. That's, that's pretty good. That's but the <laughs> truth is good. You're, you're repping for yours? I mean, I'm just saying. You're talking about good nicknames. Especially, I will say that the only reason I, I w would stunt for the truth is the way that Shaq bestowed it and delivered it which is yeah. when he said, Paul Pierce is the bleep, bleep truth. Yeah. I also like the that answer. Was the, the answer, answer was, was one good. of the best, too. That was big. Was Your favorite nickname for an NBA player? Right on the spot like that? It's not that hard a question, Zach. I, let's go with the truth. The truth is really good. Big I got, ticket's I got a nothing. good one, too. Big I, don't big like big, I don't like big ticket. You don't no? like the big ticket? I like it. It's a big ticket? What is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's the big ticket. He's I understand. The one you want to see. He's I understand in the minority. The He's in the minority. Yeah, Stifle Back Tower, people that. like for Rudy Gobert. Stifle Tower, that's pretty good. That's not bad. I still like Slim Reaper, even Stifle though we're not allowed to use it. No bueno. Oh, no bueno. Wow. Okay, all right. Boom. Coming up on the jump. Somebody got paid, and Vince Carter teaches the youth a thing or two. But first, I want to go to our distant replay. LeBron, seven years ago today. And the theft, the first turnover by Cleveland. Here is Rondo. Wow. That was 2009. He's doing that right now in 2016. The same thing. I wonder if, Ron, if uh, Rondo thought of this when Andre, the Iggy block happened. But you know what I give Rondo credit for? He tried to dunk that. 